heading due south with Bear Island on my port side. Echo Sound is telling me 12, 12.2, 11 and a half. So it's chopping and changing a bit, but there's a bit of swell out here. So as long as it's over five, I'm happy. It's going to be quite a fight back, so I'm not going to go all the way in, obviously, because it gets shallow and a bit rocky, and there are some swimming marks, so I can't go, I'm not supposed to go in any further anyway. So I think we'll call that a success and start heading back out. Now I'm uh, beating against the wind. It has actually got a little bit chilly, and uh, because there's some spray about, I'm going to I've got my jacket on. So it looks like it's gonna take me a long while to get back home, I think. Oh well, I shall have my lunch on the go. It is approximately uh, high water plus three. And I am now making across the ground approximately four and a half knots. I'm hoping that as we carry on in this direction, the tide will increase and uh, bring me back up to a more consistent four knots. If I'm gonna have to tack on these headings, like there's one due south and uh, west, uh, northwest, then that's going to take me a long time to get home. Hopefully the tide will kick in fairly soon because we're already high water plus three. Bottom speed's picked up a bit now, so we're now three and a half knots. And it looks like the wind's starting to pick up as well. Perfect, that's what we want. Four and a half knots now. Looking at this chart, I think it might be a good idea to maybe tack and head into some deeper water. That might help the tidal stream pull me along. I'm now on a starboard tack heading for deeper water. And as long as my course made good is west of south uh, I'll be quite happy with that my heading at the moment is 210 and obviously that's west of south but it's a close run thing with my course made good so that's sort of telling me that either there's very little tide or the wind is balancing the tidal stream at the moment. Starting to see a few more lumps. Um, the water depth is now 32 meters. I've been on this tack for a little while now so I think I'm probably getting into the tidal stream because it's going against the wind uh, which means that it's going to get a bit choppier. So we we'll keep going this way for a little while just a couple of minutes or so and then we'll put in a tack and uh, see what the bottom speed's like on the other tack. Not a bad heading where we are at the moment. Um, we're doing about average of four knots and uh, there's a bit of chop on obviously but uh, this is a good speed at the moment and once the depth drops below 30 we'll do another tack out into deeper water but at the moment it's hanging around 35 so we've got plenty of time to go we'll uh, 
carry on like this for a little while and my bottom speed is indeed up now at about four four and a half knots which is a lot better than uh, when I was previously on this tuck now trying to get a bit more depth and get out of Bigbury Bay and we'll keep going in this direction until I can see the Greater Mewstone again and possibly even a little further. Currently tanking along at about four and a half, uh, almost five knots. And to tell you the truth, the wind chill is up there. It's feeling a little chilly. So the wind speed has picked up a bit. And I reckon another five, ten minutes in this heading and then I should be good to head towards the Greater Mewstone. Averaging four and a half knots. Had to put a reef in, the boat was leaning over too much. So we were doing five knots but the boat was leaning over too far so um, while I put a reef in, I drifted a little bit too far north, so I'm going to have to probably put another tack in to clear uh, this headland and the Mewstone. Uh, I drifted quite a way, so I'm going to have to put another tack in to clear the Mewstone. Looking at the recent track since I put the reef in, it seems that I can't uh, head as close to the wind as I was before. So what we're going to do is we're going to go as close to the land as we can. Coming up to Stoke Point. As we get closer to this headland, I am indeed able to head a little bit closer to the west, but not by much. Um, still maintaining about five knots. I'll see how it goes. I'm not going to go stupidly shallow, obviously, because if it all goes wrong, it all goes wrong very quickly. I think we've got a bit more current here as well because my bottom speed's just shot up to 5.4. Okay, I shall wait until the depth gets to 20 metres, then I'll put a tack in. Okay, time for a tack. So looking at my previous tack heading uh, on a northwesterly uh, port tack, uh, looks like I've got to keep going this way ooh, for at least another 15-20 minutes I would say until I can clear uh, the Great Mewstone. No more risky shallow bits because my echo sound has just died. Which is not good. It's probably something to do with the battery and the solar charging so when I get back on the mooring, uh, we'll have to investigate that, find out what's going on. Rather bizarrely, I feel a bit exposed without my echo sounder. Um, I mean, I know where the shallow spots are, and I'll stay well clear of them, but it does rather put a, a damper on things. Definitely not gonna clear the Greater Mewstone, so we will have to put another tack in at some point when we get 
a bit closer. Looking at Rame Head data, that number has definitely increased. And as we can see on the constant wind speed, yep, from about half past 12, when I was just leaving Burr Island, the wind speed has increased. Have a look at the gusting. It's only gusting up to 18, so it's not particularly bad. If I'm extremely lucky, I might be able to squeeze past the Mew Stone. But I'm not going to risk it. Certainly not without an echo sound. So yeah, hopefully on this tack, I should be able to make it round into the eastern entrance. Starting to feel quite tired actually. It's all that thinking. Playing it extra safe and keeping it wide of any coast until I can go straight up into the eastern entrance. So it's been a fairly long day already. So I set off just after eight and it's now just after three. So that's seven hours right there. And it's gonna be at least another hour before I get back to my mooring. This tidal stream arrow that's just behind me, that could explain why I've got high bottom speed. Handheld GPS telling me 5.6, 5.8, something like that. The wind has got rather squirrely around the eastern entrance, so it's now coming almost on me nose. And it was coming from the west, so it's now coming from west, uh, north, northwest possibly, but the sea is still coming from behind. The chop is still coming from behind. Yay, we're nearly home. Coming back in through the eastern entrance. Final leg. Final run back through the moorings. I'll get into Clavelli Bay and I'll pull the jib in and then tack back to the mooring. Seven hours, 55 minutes, 33 nautical miles. Quite a day and it's still not over yet because I've got to pack all this shit away. Excuse me, got to pack all this stuff away. <laughs> 